Despite an approaching storm, a man throws his sick dog and her nine newborn puppies out of his car before speeding away. The poor dog feels helpless, but then something amazing happens. A car comes speeding around a corner, screeches to a halt, and a man jumps out. He opens the back door, grabs a cardboard box from the seats, and places it on the side of the road. A weak Labrador jumps out of the car, whimpering in pain and fear. The man doesn't even look at the dog before rushing back to the car, locking the doors and speeding away, abandoning the poor Labrador in the middle of nowhere. Griselda looks around. She's in the middle of a dense forest, surrounded by whispering trees and rustling leaves. The tired Labrador lies next to the box, checking inside now and then to ensure her puppies are safe, as much as they can be in their situation. The air smells like rain is coming. Griselda's amber eyes show concern as she scans her surroundings, feeling uneasy. Would Fred come back? Would Anne ever find out that she was gone for good? She didn't know. She also didn't know how she would take care of the nine newborn puppies in the box. There was very little she knew at the moment. Time passed and no one came for her. It had only been a few hours since her owner had cruelly left her to survive on her own with her vulnerable puppies in the harsh wilderness. The memories of her past life now felt like distant echoes, fading into emptiness of abandonment. However, Griselda was familiar with hardship. She had faced neglect, cruel words, and hunger while in Fred's care during Anne's absence. As thunder rumbled in the distance, Griselda knew she had to find shelter for her young ones before the storm hit. Her own body trembled. She was still weak from giving birth to such a large litter, and her illness was wearing her down. Griselda led her puppies deeper into the woods, her senses alert to every sound or movement. She knew danger was everywhere, that predators were lurking, hungry for easy prey. But Griselda was determined. She would protect her babies at all costs, even if it meant giving up her own life. Hours passed, the sky growing darker with each moment. The first drops of rain began to fall, pattering gently on the forest floor. Griselda quickened her pace, her heart pounding. She desperately searched for shelter, and then, just as hope was fading, she saw it, a small cave beneath the roots of a towering oak tree. Relief washed over her as she hurried inside, her pups close behind. As a storm raged outside, she huddled close to her babies, her warmth surrounding them like a protective cocoon. The poor pups wanted to feed, but she didn't have enough milk for them. Still, they latched on, giving Griselda some comfort. Then, as suddenly as it begun, the storm passed. But even in the newfound quiet, Griselda couldn't shake the memories of her former life, of the family that had abandoned her without a second thought. So, she needed to start walking again, this time not towards shelter, but in search of a compassionate person who could take care of her needy pups. Thankfully, the universe smiled upon her. As Griselda and her puppies ventured further into the woods, they stumbled upon a group of lost hikers, among them was Maxine, a spirited young girl with a big heart. Drawn to Griselda and her puppies, Maxine approached them with cautious curiosity, her eyes wide with wonder. She squealed in concern when she saw the pitiful state of the dogs. Maxine's parents quickly approached the dogs, worried they might hurt their daughter. But when they saw how hopeless the dogs looked, their hearts broke. Why was a sick mama dog in the middle of the woods with nine newborn puppies? Where were her owners? Maxine's parents were compassionate and decided to end their hike early to help the dogs. But first, they needed to gain the mama dog's trust. Maxine reached out to the Labrador with a gentle hand, her touch full of kindness. And in that moment, something magical happened. Griselda felt a connection, a bond beyond words. She knew Maxine was different. Somehow, she could trust. Maxine's father took off his jacket and tied the sleeves together to make a makeshift bag. Her mother picked up the puppies one by one and carefully placed them inside the jacket. Maxine offered to carry Griselda to their car. Her parents were doubtful, but the Labrador was so thin she was almost weightless, and even their 12-year-old daughter could carry her. Once in the car, the family drove quickly to the nearest veterinary clinic. There, nurses took over, moving the puppies to a warm room while the doctors examined Griselda. The doctor found that she had heartworms, a dangerous disease. He was amazed that Griselda had managed to go through her pregnancy, deliver nine healthy puppies, and walk through the woods despite her poor health. However, he had news about her origins. 
Griselda was microchipped, and he identified her owner as Anne. Maxine's parents asked if Anne had reported Griselda missing, but the vet said he had already contacted local shelters and no one had reported her missing. Maxine's parents were furious and immediately offered to call Anne to scold her for leaving a dog with newborn puppies. While the vet prepared Griselda for surgery, they dialed Anne's number. When she answered, they angrily confronted her for what they saw as a terrible act. However, Anne's response shocked them deeply. Bursting into tears, she insisted she would never abandon Griselda, whom she loved dearly. Anne explained she'd been away for work out of state for the past two months, trusting her boyfriend Fred to care for Griselda. It seemed Fred had failed in his responsibility. Distressed by Griselda's condition and now facing the care of nine puppies, Anne decided to cut her work trip short and promised to be at the vet clinic by the following day. Maxine's parents were perplexed by Anne's explanation, but found her tears convincing. Now, they needed to decide what to do with the nine puppies waiting for care in the clinic. With the vet's approval, they took the nine dogs home, creating a cozy bed for them and feeding them warm milk. The next day, Maxine's family went about their usual routine until the doorbell rang. Opening it, they found a woman with tear-streaked eyes standing on their porch. Anne introduced herself politely and asked to see the puppies. Sitting with the little dogs over a warm cup of tea, she finally shared her story with Maxine's family. Griselda, Anne, and Fred's beige Labrador came into their lives when they moved in together. They hoped having a pet would strengthen their bond and prepare them for future parenthood. However, their plan didn't go smoothly. Fred struggled to adjust to caring for someone besides himself. They had adopted Griselda when she was less than a year old, and she hadn't been spayed yet. The shelter advised them to keep her indoors, especially during her heat cycles, but Fred often forgot and let her sleep in the backyard. Unfortunately, Anne frequently traveled for work and couldn't oversee things closely every day. A few weeks later, Griselda's behavior began to change. She slept more than usual and showed less enthusiasm for walks or playing with toys. Concerned about Griselda, Anne and Fred decided to take her to the vet. After several tests and assessments, the doctors discovered what was ailing the Labrador. However, they struggled with how to break the news. When they informed Anne and Fred that Griselda was pregnant, they chastised Fred for his carelessness and leaving her outside at night. But the pregnancy wasn't the only troubling news. The doctors also diagnosed Griselda with a severe case of heartworms, which posed a serious threat to her life, especially considering her pregnancy. Anne immediately asked if they could treat Griselda before she gave birth. Sadly, the vet explained that treating such a condition was risky, even under normal conditions, and doing so while Griselda was pregnant would only complicate matters further. Devastated by this prognosis, Anne broke down in tears in Fred's arms. Unfortunately, Fred showed little emotion about Griselda's plight. The following week, Anne received an assignment from her workplace for a field project halfway across the country. Reluctant to leave Griselda in her fragile state, Anne had little choice but to heed the call of her work. Her departure was scheduled for a Tuesday, marking the beginning of a two-month absence. This extended period meant Anne might miss Griselda's giving birth, assuming the Labrador survived that long. With Anne away, Fred felt no need to maintain a facade of caring for Griselda. Truth be told, he hadn't bonded with the dog and had never been enthusiastic about her presence. Getting Griselda had been Anne's idea, and Fred was increasingly realizing that he didn't enjoy the responsibility of caring for another living being. In the days that followed, Fred's care for Griselda was lackluster at best. He neglected to change her water or clean her kennel, only putting on a show of concern when Anne called for updates. And as a result, Griselda's already deteriorating health worsened rapidly. Some days, she resorted to scavenging scraps from the dumpster, feeling neglected by an owner who seemed to have forgotten about her. When Fred and Anne first brought Griselda into their lives, Fred had felt a deep empathy for the abandoned dog. However, as time wore on, Griselda's presence began to grate on his nerves, and he started harboring resentment towards her and Anne for leaving her in his care. After spending hours laboring to clean up after Griselda's latest mess, Fred reached a breaking point. In a fit of frustration, he locked Griselda in her kennel without food or water as punishment. As dusk settled and Fred's evening visitor arrived, Griselda's relentless barking and howling shattered any hope of a peaceful night. Fuming with anger after his friend departed, Fred stormed out of the house towards the kennel, demanding Griselda's attention. When the dog only whimpered in response, he peered into the shelter and was stunned by what he saw. 
Griselda had given birth, puppies were scattered all around her. While the sight might have softened another person's heart, Fred's overwhelming anger at the idea of caring for not only an adult dog, but also nine newborn puppies consumed him. Blinded by rage and resentment, he committed a despicable act. Taking advantage of Griselda's weakened state, he callously scooped up the puppies, placing them in a cardboard box. He loaded the box into his car, with Griselda weakly following behind. In a final act of detachment, he removed her collar, convinced that this would sever any connection back to him or Anne. With grim resolve, he drove off into the night, abandoning them without a backward glance. Unbeknownst to Fred, Griselda had a microchip leading authorities to identify Anne as her owner. As Anne tearfully recounted the horrific betrayal to Maxine's parents, she couldn't contain her grief. Her boyfriend's true character had been exposed as heartless and devoid of empathy, leading her to end their relationship. Maxine's parents, deeply moved by Anne's plight, urged her to accompany them to the veterinary clinic to check on Griselda. Reluctantly, Anne agreed. Upon arrival, they found Griselda recovering from surgery, the vet confirming a successful procedure. Now, all Griselda needed was peace and quiet to regain her strength and heal from the ordeal inflicted upon her and her newborn puppies. When Anne walked into the dog room, expecting the Labrador to bark angrily at her, she was surprised to see Griselda's eyes light up. The dog happily barked in recognition and wagged her tail, overwhelmed with joy to see her favorite human. Anne couldn't help but cry. Griselda still loved her and was ready to forgive her for leaving her with Fred. But now, Griselda needed a new place to live and start over. Luckily, Maxine's neighbor had just moved to another city, leaving his big, empty apartment behind. It was perfect for someone who had to care for ten dogs, well, actually nine, Griselda and her eight puppies. There was no way Maxine could leave without taking one of those adorable furry balls home. And Anne agreed immediately. She might have lost a boyfriend, but she gained new friends, both human and canine, and she didn't need anyone else in her life. What a happy ending. What would you have said to Fred if you were in Anne's shoes? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.